put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Supremacy Move Review. Born has gone off of the grid, and he is forced back into into the grid, back on the radar when someone frames him for the murder of two CIA agents during an op gone bad. And yeah, I suppose that more or less covers it. Actually, along the way, he is also having these dreams which evolve into flashbacks that he he's trying to make sense of. And yes, that pretty well covers the plot. This this is one of those sequels that not only as many sequels to popular movies do make things, you know, bigger, it's one of the sequels that make things bigger where it actually works. The... It's... It's got a faster pace. There, there was nothing wrong with the, the... with identity's pace, but this one's even faster. And, you know, the... the, the scope is bigger. It's got far more locations, you know, with with the sort of the immediate story out of the way, what we got in identity pretty well sets up, and from there you can just have various stories, and this is one such story. It it goes a lot of different places, uh, all over Europe. Yeah, va various places. Russia, Paris, Berlin. Not Paris, sorry, that was the first one. Various places, and it maintains most of what was good about the first one. It's still immensely realistic. We still feel like this is basically the real world. Punches hurt. Bullets actually inflict damage. Guns need reloading. The police aren't stupid. <sighs> Trained agents do not really make mistakes. And... The... And it, it, it again bases sort of the, the... The action does get bigger, but it maintains the, the... This very realistic approach where basically it's not going to play out like a big Hollywood action flick. It's going to go the way that it would realistically go in that sort of situation. You know, can one man, how does one man deal with, you know, a dozen guys trying to stop him? Does he face them head on and take them down one by one? No, that's ridiculous. It would never happen in real life. No, he distracts them or lays a trap for them or something like that. And there is more action and it. It sort of, it goes on for longer, and it just, yeah, it gets bigger. 
we again have chases, far more chases, and martial arts sequences, which again very much focus on every hit, every, every move is designed to take out the opponent. And the only way that it doesn't go that way is if the opponent blocks it. There is no showing off, there is no I know kung fu kind of nothing like that. And of course shootouts. And again the you know weapons have realistic range, there's recoil, there's these various things. This and, and again, exposition is dealt with very nicely. There's very little sort of forced exposition, and a lot of the time we have to put two and two together. The, the movie doesn't... There's, there's never a character who sits down and says, well, okay, this is how it happened. It just doesn't happen, because, again, that's really not real life, you know? It, yeah, and uh, not only that, it's just boring. It's boring to just sit and listen to someone explain something, you know, you, you want a conversation, you want something where there's a sort of back and forth going on. Now, the... Yes, the, the, there are a few new characters. We have Carl Urban, who is very convincing as this Russian guy who kills people. I'm not going to give away exactly what he is because for some reason the movie doesn't actually tell us until quite a bit of the way through, but you do get to know what he is. And yeah, I... This is the only movie I've seen him in where I really like him. Not, not in the way that I like the character, but I just, he's really convincing here. I don't know what he brought here that he didn't bring to anything else I've seen him in, but yeah, this remains the one thing that I've seen him in where I can really say he kicked ass in this movie. And his Russian is quite convincing. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not Russian. I don't remember his nationality, but yeah. And yeah, that also goes on from the first if someone seems like they should be speaking a different language than English, then yeah, they're gonna speak that language and we're gonna have subtitles and the audience is just gonna have to deal with it. And sort of the other major character to appear here who wasn't in the first is Pamela Landy, the new deputy director of the CIA, played really, really well by Joan Allen. This woman has got woman stones. Seriously, she is one of the most badass characters in this entire trilogy. She is almost as badass as Born himself. She just, she's not taking no for an answer. She is determined and yeah, she's, she's just really, really awesome. And it was her up that got busted, and she wants answers. So, even though Bourne isn't actually the one who, you know, she, she thinks he is the one who killed those two guys, she wants him to answer for it. And, yeah, and, and that's interesting, you know, now you have these two very determined people, very capable CIA agents going up against each other. And again, that's like in the first, we it's it's somewhat of a gray area, and it's actually yeah, cap capable people on both sides of the conflict makes it much more interesting. And then we have Brian Cox and Julia Stiles returning. Both of them still fantastic in their roles. Both of them still very professional. Everyone. It really does seem professional. You know, that's what's... One of the things that's really awesome about this trilogy. Everyone seems like they actually could be working at the CIA or... And, and such. 
I, th I guess I could briefly talk about it. Brian Cox is still one of the big wigs at the CIA, and Julia Stiles is, of course, much less of a... You know, she, she also works for the CIA, but to, to a much lesser capacity. And, of course, Matt Damon, again, fantastic. He really has this, excuse me, in, where in the first, excuse me, he had to portray an amnesiac and he had that challenge. In this, it's, you know, he, he, he knows who he is now and he, he's basically, he's going to follow up on the promise he made near the end of the first movie. If you come after me, there is no limit to how fast and how hard I will bring this fight to your doorstep. That's what he's doing for this movie. He, again, we have the determination. And he knows how, you know, he, he knows how the CIA work, and he knows all these, you know, they, they trained him to be able to go up against, yeah, pretty much anyone, including themselves. So... Yeah, and, and that also, you know, makes it bigger. In the first one, for the most for most of the movie, he didn't even remember that he was an assassin. And he wasn't really trying, he wasn't picking a fight with them. He just wanted to know who he was and to keep them away from him so that he could find out. And in this, yeah, he, he has something to, you know, he feels like this is the way that... I'm going to get them off my back, because I want them off my back. It's been two years. At the beginning of this movie, it's made clear that it's been two years since the events of the first one, and now they're coming after him again. It, it, he feels like it's never going to end if he doesn't do this. So, yeah, he is determined to terrify them away from, you know, daring to go after him again. Add to that... He wants to find out what he, he's out to prove that he didn't do the, you know, the, the job he was framed for. Now, that does bring me to the, the negatives. I suppose I'll start. Before I get too deep into them, I really should say this is still a fantastic movie. I'm not sure it rated quite on the same level as the first one. But it's quite close. There are just a few things, and I will try to ease into it. For one thing, this does go into some of the cliches that the first one did a better job of avoiding. Some of the spy action thriller genre cliches. You know, you have... I can't really give too many details, just... Yeah, but well, most of them are spoilers, so it. For, well, one thing that I can say is that, unlike the first one, sometimes this has people making mistakes where it seems like, yeah, they, they really shouldn't have done that. And it kind of is, well, if they didn't make their mistake, then how could the movie proceed in the way that they wanted it to proceed? And I sympathize, but it's annoying when, when you can tell that that really shouldn't have happened. Born himself, I think they kind of pushed it to the limit of what we could completely believe in the first one. In this one, he's starting to look a little superhuman. It's like, no matter what, he just knows how, yeah, what is going to, what is going to happen, and how, sort of, yeah, it, it just, it seems like he, he has some kind of psychic power where he can tell the future, and that's how he's made, it doesn't seem like powers of observation, and extremely quick thinking really could cut it this time. And yeah, in the first one, I'm not sure there's really anything where you can point to it and say, well, how, could, how did he know that? That was, just, yeah. The... Oh, 
also as actually as one example of how he seems almost superhuman. As I mentioned, he has some flashbacks to something that happened, and I really shouldn't give it away because it's only gradually revealed over the course of the film. But yeah, he has these flashbacks, <sighs> even though these seem uncontrollable, and just suddenly he gets a flash of memory or something. He manages to time his actions correctly, even when he's briefly interrupted by flashback. And that again just seems... I, I mean, did, I don't, did he plan for the flashback? Did he think, well, okay, I should probably leave 10 seconds for... I might get a flashback during this, and I should have those 10 seconds to have the flashback in. And yeah, it just... Yeah. No, it just doesn't make sense. The... Another big thing is the, the the style. It's not that there's really something wrong with it, it just it is straining. This is the first of the two in this series to be directed by Paul Greengrass, and he has a particular style to him. He likes shaky cam. He doesn't just like it in action scenes, he likes it in general. There is not one shot in this entire movie which is not done by shaky cam. He explains in some interviews that it's like, well, you know, it, it adds sort of, it, it adds tension to every scene. And I can't really argue with him. It just, it does get to be, I suppose it's not quite headache inducing, but it is kind of close. And add to that that in the action scenes, sometimes this shaky camera gets close, very close, and frankly it gets disorienting. Suddenly you don't know who you're looking at, what you're looking at, where something is in relation to... There are several action scenes in this where I got lost. And again, like the first one, I've watched this movie three, five times, something like that. So, so it's not like, you know, and yeah, on the first time, you're really good. It's it's definitely a movie you may have to rewind or watch twice to be absolutely sure what's going on in the action scenes. And yeah, the 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 climax is especially straining. It's not even that it. I can't really say that it goes on for too long. It's just, it's, it's all the way up here in intensity, and it just stays there for the entire duration. And it does get, again, like I said, straining. This all ab about Greengrass' style would be a lot easier to, to sort of adjust to if he was more of a friend with his lighting guy, because apparently the two are not on speaking terms. Again, at least in a lot of the sort of... I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure that's specifically the action scenes, but again, just in general, I would say maybe a third of this film doesn't feel like it's lit. I'm sure it is, but it's just so vague. I'm sorry, I was shattering there. I will stop that immediately. <sighs> It's, it remains very dark, in spite of the lighting that I'm sure they did, that they just kept very, I don't know, minimal, subtle, kind of. And I, I get what they're doing. This is a grittier movie than the first one, where the first one was sort of very 60s, 70s, classic spy movie. This one is sort of more, this is... This we're, we're deep into the gray zone. We are. This is this is real life. This is nasty. That these people are killers. It's unpleasant. It's dark. I get that, and a lot of the way that does work. It's just there are so many shots that where where you can just barely see what's going on, and 
when things are moving fast and the camera is shaking all over the place and zoomed in and it's an action scene that's already fairly chaotic you just kind of give up, you resign and say, you know what, I can't follow with this. And in a few minutes, the scene's going to be over, and then I'll try to pick back up with the movie. That's also something, with the increased pace, you really have to be on, be, be ready for this movie. From the moment it starts to the moment it ends, it is just constantly going. And that's not sort of by itself a bad thing. It's just, again, with the close camera shots and the action scenes and the, the lighting, all this stuff, it... Let's say the first movie, which is always so well lit that you can, you can see everything that's going on. And the movie has very little shaky cam. If that movie had been as fast as this movie, it would be much easier to take. It's the combination. It's, it has a cumul cumulative effect, and you end up with this straining movie that, yeah. And again, this doesn't mean it's a bad movie, but it does mean that, yeah, you... You, you need to be ready for it, and it can be straining. That might more or less cover it. Yes, I believe so. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.